Okay, short video on uh, adding an effect via this panel here, effects panel, and then using the effect controls to modify that with some keyframes added in as well and a bit of rendering. So the effect I'm going to go for is um, essentially while this character on the right there is uh, going through one animation, what I want to do is run a magnifying glass over some of the others uh, on the left hand side. So the first thing um, I'm going to do is find the magnify effect. So I'm already in the effects panel of the project window here. And I know there's one called magnify, so I just need to start typing the first few letters. There it is, magnify. Just drop it onto there like that. Now if I go to effects controls, because I've got this clip highlighted, you'll see that there are the things I can alter for um, magnify. And it's already got the default values in there like that. Now I don't want it for the entirety of this clip, I just want it while that woman's on the right hand side there, maybe from about there. So what I'm going to do is come up here, this is where you might use markers, I'm going to click add marker and go along, I can scrub up here as well. If I want to I can get a bit more space for myself by making this longer, pull that back in, Touch because I don't need that much more room to move and before it starts fading out I want to lose the magnification so about there click add marker so I've got two markers and I can just go go to previous marker snap there like that <coughs> so um, first thing I want to do is add a keyframe where it starts and uh, the thing I'm going to be animating is the position or it's called the center here, so I'm going to turn that on. And that creates a keyframe at where this blue line is. It's fine. Now, I want to, the magnifying glass to start off screen, travel to here, and then go down and off screen there. Um, so I could just do key, two keyframes, one here and one off screen there, but then it would just interplay by going down there like that. Uh, which is not what I want. So I need to put an intermediate keyframe approximately halfway through. So right about there. Add a new keyframe by clicking this button here like that. Now I've got a new keyframe. It inherits the values of the previous one, so I need to make sure that's highlighted. Just turn blue and um, position that where I want it to be. I haven't positioned the first one yet, but I know this second one, um, I want it to be on this figure there, so that means it's got to go up a bit, about there, and maybe just back a bit to about there so that character is fairly centered. So I've got that keyframe, now at the moment because I didn't set the first one, it's just going to make a journey from there to there, which is not right, so I can use these arrows to go back to a previous keyframe, now that's on this one here, and we want it to start by being off screen there like that. Now. Um, because I want it to be straight, probably the best thing to do is actually to go to this keyframe. And because I've done this rather stupidly, I'll need, need to have to do it by value. So I need the, the actual position uh, vertically to be 160. So let's just go back to the previous keyframe. I know that's got to be 160. There and now I can just track it back on a line off screen to about there. That's good. Okay, so now I've got the first and the second keyframe, just need to add one at the end. So let's go to that marker I've added, go to the next marker. There we are, keyframe there. Now, because that's already on the previous one, I've duplicated that. All I need to do is move it down so it just increases value so it goes off the screen. Okay, now if I'm to play this back, let's see what we get. Yeah, two things are happening there. Number one, it's not playing in real time. I think we'll stop that. Thank you. Let's go back to our clip. Number one, it's not playing back in real time, so what we're going to do um, 
is to render that, but we're going to fix something else first in that by default, when you keyframe something, it uh, does a kind of Bezier path. In other words, it sort of loops round. So if you imagine it's drawing like really lazy curves between these points, hence the reason it goes up slightly and then it kind of bows out and then comes back down here like that. Now we can alter that. We highlight all the keyframes and then right click and you can not only change uh, the way it deals with time, so ease in means it kind of speeds up at the beginning, ease out means it kind of slows down at the end. We're not interested in that at the moment, we're going to keep it constant speed. But you can see auto bezier, what I want to do is have it linear. In other words, it follows a kind of right angle path as we intended. You see already that snaps back and if I scrub through now like this, that's kind of fun. But um, because I was having issues with it not being able to catch up, uh, I'm just going to briefly render this out. It's quite a complex effect. But in fact, even before I do that, let's move it um, somewhere mid-screen. And as we've got these characteristics here, we might think, well, we're moving with the size of that circle a bit bigger because we're losing a bit of a head. So I can either click and drag. Let's make it 110, like that. Um, the other thing I could do is increase the magnification, for instance, so um, very non-naturalistic, or I could actually, no, it won't let me shrink, but I can increase that maybe to about that sort of level. And the other thing I want to do, just so it's not such a sharp kind of circle going across, is I'll do what's called uh, feather it, so the edges will kind of blur out. So if I do extreme, you'll see it's, because it splurges over the edge, but I only just want a little bit of feathering just to soften <clears throat> the edge of that. Okay, now as I haven't keyframed these, they'll apply throughout. So having done that now, all that remains is for me to just um, highlight just outside either of these points, in point there, out point there, and go up to here to sequence and choose render into out, um, depending on the speed of the machine. This will take some time or no time at all. And now it's going to play it back and we should be able to see the effect. Here we go. Goes along as it hits the midpoint, goes down there, there's a few more characters, and then goes out like that. So that's adding an 